Hi, welcome to the uh, unboxing of the DC3. This is my first dash cam review. Um, I had the DC2 for the last four years and wanted to upgrade the camera. I uh, went back to Rotor because I thought the product was very good and they've now launched the DC3 in 2019 with 60 frames per second in high definition. They've also upgraded the camera angle from 120 degrees to 125 and you can also now record at 60 frames per second up to 128 gigabyte uh, on the various SD cards. So this is again as I mentioned my first review. It's, um, I'm using a, an iPhone uh, at home so I will try and keep it steady and I hope you enjoy the review. So this is the box itself as you can see. Um, if you were to turn the box over it says it comes with a 16 gigabyte card uh, which is true. It comes with their own card from DC uh, Roadhawk which is the team cards. They're not such a high spec. Um, I would certainly recommend that you still go out and buy your own quality card. Uh, I spent £24 on a, a scan disc card which was 170 megabytes uh, write uh, and read and um, very good quality cards uh, and I have no regrets. So uh, let's have a look to see what we have on the box. So if we look at the back of the box uh, as you can see here it is a forward facing camera it does have a new chipset um, the recording loop is one minute. So I'd recommend you keep this as a, a one minute loop. Just so you can keep the event recording uh, working. And I'll explain that when I show you the software on my computer. Um, as I've mentioned, the GS4 sensors, SDX cards up to 128 gigabyte. Um, lens is now a new six element lens. Uh, very good, very clear. Okay. So inside the box, uh, you will get the camera, SD card, the card reader, uh, cables, and the various arms for the window screen. So if I now uh, turn the box over again, here on the side of the box, it just talks about some of the recording attributes. Um, it does say it has uh, HDR technology, which provides a good video day or night. This is true. Um, but when you look at the software, which I will come to shortly, there's a couple of settings that I would recommend just to get the best from this particular camera. Okay, so if I now open the box, um, you would normally find a, a camera housing just here, um, which basically looks like this. I've taken the camera out already because it's next to the box and I want to be able to show you that shortly. So within the box, you will find that you have a quick start guide. Uh, pretty straightforward on the reverse of the guide it will also advise you how to fit it and how to place the cabling um, moving the inner box away you will find that you have the SD card which again um, automatically comes with the uh, camera but I would recommend using a different card with a higher quality spec uh, a 16 gigabyte gigabyte card will probably give you maybe one to two hours maximum at the highest resolution recording. So inside the box you have the uh, adapter that will supply power from your cigarette lighter. Um, I have in my car already a hardwired kit and I'm very happy to say that the cable uh, adapter here that you can see still fits the new DC3 from four years ago when I had the DC2 uh, installed. The card reader for your laptop or your computer. Um, again, this wasn't available on the original uh, camera from four years ago. Uh, you have some cable clips that you can use. I have my cables tucked away in the headlining of the car. So there's going to be two videos. There's going to be the one that shows you the camera and the software, and then I will do another video from within the car so you can see the camera in use. I already have loaded up some videos uh, to my channel uh, so you can be able to see the quality of this footage. Now, it does come with three uh, mounts. I have one in the car already, uh, so I will show you that shortly. Um, so it's nice to have the spares. Uh, if it's the first time of buying the camera, um, then these will also be very useful. So they are designed according to the window screen that you have, depending on the angle of the window screen. 
um, it will determine how you may want to fit uh, the camera and how close to the screen you, you want to fit the camera. It's recommended that you fit the camera as close to the screen as possible and this is just to really stop the reflections. So this is the DC3 camera and uh, if I can show you this it has a new super lens which is very much different to the original design. Uh, the size of this particular camera is exactly the same size as the DC2. Uh, underneath the camera you can see that you have the speaker. Uh, this is for giving you the audio to confirm when, uh, as you can see from the back, when the recording lights and GPS have been engaged. Uh, you have the event button here that you can push. Um, so Rotalk will keep 60% of the SD card for standard recording. Every time that there's a sensor recognizes a change to the vehicle, it will then supply that film to the last 40% of the card. You will have the SD card uh, in here, which I currently have in my laptop so I can show you the software settings. On the side of the card, you will have the mic in and the power cable. Um, so I, as I said, I have the hardwire power solution, which I feel uh, is great. Um, here you have the bracket for which the lens, uh, sorry, the, the mount will be uh, attached to, very sturdy, and you don't get any camera shake when the vehicle is moving. Okay, so moving over to the laptop, um, if I can just show you the settings on this particular piece of software. So we have the uh, DC3 uh, software version 7.1. Now, Roadhawk don't have uh, a latest software for the DC3, so the version from DC2 HD would actually drive this camera. And on these settings, you can see that I've got the resolution set to 1080p at 60 frames per second. Uh, I'm having it on one minute loops uh, file length so I can ensure that the record and event mode that you can see just here will maintain. Now at the bottom of this menu you've got HDR off. Now Roadhawk recommends that you leave this switched on if you do a lot of nighttime driving or early morning driving but that does reduce the frame rate down to 30 frames per second. So I've decided to leave this at the highest possible resolution for video quality, uh, for frame rate and resolution with HDR off. On this side, you'll be able to see that I've got auto format set to two weeks. And that simply means that the camera has now got the feature to reformat the card for you without it having to be removed and placed back into your PC or laptop. Um, now, it does give you an audio warning to let you know that it will reformat the card at the next time of operation, which should be the following day. Uh, I haven't yet put this to the test, but this is what's been recommended. So the software itself is uh, very good. Um, if I were to switch down the HDR mode to on, you'll see that the software actually reduces in size. Um, and this is because everything has now been set to maximum. So this will give you perfect nighttime and day daytime driving, um, but I prefer, because I'm mainly a day driver, uh, to ensure that we get the 60 frames per second at 1080p. So my next video will be based in the car, and I will show you what it looks like when it's being powered up. And I hope you found this of use. Thank you.